Hi again, everybody. Mother's Day is coming up. I know it's came up so fast this year. I didn't even realize that all of a sudden here we are. And I know you want to get a great gift for your mom, right? You know, or, or at least, at least a hug. It's something, something to show her how much you care that she has worked and played for you and given you life. Well, there are all sorts of moms that maybe she hasn't biologically given you life, but she has ensured that you continue to have life. So, you know, and that's all good. In any case, in any case, if you feel moved to show your appreciation through the donation of a gift, I am wording this so oddly, <laughs> then have manufacturers and advertisers got ideas for you and they're mostly like clothes and flowers and candy and you know the usual suspects when it comes to that kind of stuff and plenty of moms like that sort of thing and that's great but not every mom goes for that type of thing right my mom would probably be happy with like i don't know a socket wrench or something like that she's very handy I personally am also a mom. I have three kids. I am not handy, but flowers and candy, I, I don't know. Flowers particularly, you spend $50 and then they die in a few days. They're beautiful and I love them, but if you're going to give me something, it's like you spend your hard-earned money on it. It would be good if it was something that stuck around, maybe something I'll actually use. So with that extremely awkward segue, it's not really a segue at all. I am going for a list of presents for moms who are writers and or readers. So let's jump right in. I will list in the description where you can find these things. I do not have specific links because it was not linking properly on my computer. I don't know why, um, but you can just search them up and you should be able to find them. Most of them are on Etsy. Etsy just has good stuff. <laughs> and you are buying mostly, hopefully, from small individual makers. So, you know, creative people helping creative people. It's all good. I love it. This first one, though, is not from Etsy. This is from Amazon. It's a t-shirt. They also have sweatshirts, hoodies, raglans. I think there's a tank top in this design. I am a mom and a writer. Nothing scares me. I love this shirt. It says it all. The thing about buying shirts online, you never quite know if they're going to be in good condition. There are no reviews on this, so if you want to take a chance, buyer beware. This was a great design, though. No matter what, a t-shirt, something like that, is quite often a good idea. It's something that your mom will probably use if she wears it. Number two, candles. People love candles. I love candles. Smells like it's going to be a bestseller. Thank you for the encouragement, candle. I sure hope so. A candle believes in me. I can do this. When you're sitting at your desk or your table or wherever you can writing, what do you need? Well, you need something to drink, obviously. Probably something warm in a mug, even in the hottest temperatures. Okay, maybe that's just me. But what do you need to put that on so you don't ruin your table or desk or what have you? A coaster. That's right. And there are some fantastic writer-themed coasters on Etsy, such as the Library Due Date Coaster Set. There are a lot of different things of those due date cards, and it's fantastic. I personally have a mouse pad with the due dates. You can get them personalized if you want to with personal dates that mean something to you. Or you can just get a generic set of dates. But no matter what, coasters, mouse pads, something with the library cards, it's it's nostalgic, especially for those moms of us of a certain age who happen to remember these actual due date cards. Here's something very handy, a book and glass holder. There are many holders that you can just put your book down, and they are very convenient. Not all of them have a place to put your cup, though. This is very handy indeed, plus there's a little tray section where you can put down other things. Number five, the customizable pet Bookmark. Of course, bookmarks had to be on this list. And these are so cute and so personal. You can get 
a choice of two. So you can have two pets, maybe more than two pets. You'd have to order more, unfortunately. But you can get your little pet space there in the middle of the book, just waiting to you come back. Instead of your actual pet space, which could also wind up in the middle of your book if they really want attention. Number six, the pretty, pretty flower book vase. There are many book vases on Etsy. This is the more floral and pretty sort of thing, which those sorts of things just abound around Mother's Day. And it's like, well, what if your mom's not into that type of stuff? But I guess, you know, forget them. I don't know. But there are moms who love that sort of thing, and that's great. There are moms who don't love that sort of thing, and it's great. There are all sorts of book vases on Etsy. This one is particularly pretty, so I decided to highlight that one. Number seven, bookshelf decor. This is the dreamy mini alley, book nook, cozy, magical reading, book nook, all the other descriptive words that they put in there. This is so cute and so clever. There's this little alley. There's also, I think, one of a coffee shop or one of a little library. And you can just tuck them in among the books. Like, like the little book elves are just hanging out in between watching over your books or whatever book elves do. I don't know. I'm not a book elf. Number eight. Speaking of moms of a certain age, the reading rainbow shirt. Reading rainbow. We, we've got to have our reading rainbow and proclaim our love. Number nine. Speaking of something to drink, cups or mugs have got to be on this list. Well, why just have a writing or reading cup or writing or reading mug when you can have a writing or reading tankard? But mom wouldn't want a tankard. I want a tankard. Number 10, a typewriter. If you're a big spender, a typewriter, a real typewriter. Okay, not every mom loves the retro stuff, but... If your mom does love the retro stuff, a typewriter, a real typewriter, because you can't satisfactorily bang out the world's next bestseller novel on a computer. It just doesn't work. The click, 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 it doesn't. It's not the same. It's not the same. You have to have the real noise and jams and and cursing under your breath and having to use actual whiteout that a typewriter brings with it. It's a whole experience. On the flip side, you don't have to waste your time cursing at the printer. Eleven, journals. Of course, journals, notebooks, that has to make this list. Again, if you want to be a bit of a big spender, go with the fancy ones, the leather bound or fake leather bound. That's fine, too. This one in particular has a few extra pockets. You can tuck in memo pads. You can tuck in your credit cards or library card. Number 12. If you decide not to splurge on the one with the card holder, then get them a card holder. This one attaches to a keychain. That is very handy, so you will always have your library card with you, handy, ready to show and check out your books. Number 13, if you don't feel like going to the library, which can happen rarely, like if the weather's really bad or something, so then you stay at home and you snuggle up. I don't care what temperature it is outside. Yes, I'm cold, and I want a cozy blanket. This one is perfect. It comes in a couple different layers, so there is fleece if you want to be super cozy, or there's velveteen, not quite as cozy, but still cozy. And it's got books all over it. Oh, perfect. Number 14, writing utensils, obviously. Pens are great. Pens are, there are some beautiful pens out there. The problem with pens is they're not so great for writers because they don't erase. <laughs> you need something that erases. These ones in particular list banned books, uh, 19th century. And they're embossed on there kind of in the style of the school pencils that you used to get and maybe still do, but I don't think you do. I think they kind of screen print on there, except it's not screen printing. I digress. I don't know. Number 15, a pencil bag to keep all your writing utensils in. 
one with several pockets again several layers several pockets this is the way you want to go so that you can keep your pencils separate your pen separate your erasers maybe even little memo stickies stickers even anything you want to tuck in there you can keep separate in its own little place so you can find it when you need it number 16 a tote bag this one in particular is our old friends frog and toad and i have one I requested one for Christmas, was it, I think, or birthday, or maybe I didn't get one and I just got it for myself. I can't remember now, but I had to have it. The ever-present tote bag to carry the books, to carry the notebooks, to carry your pencil bags in. You're going to need it. Number 17. This may seem a little odd. It is a decorative serving tray. This is for your stack of books. This is for your to-be-read pile. And it better be a decorative tray because those books are going to be sitting on it for a long while. Number 18, a thesaurus. A writer cannot be without a good thesaurus. Rogets is one of the best, but you can pick another one if you want to. No matter what, it has to be a thesaurus. Readers also like thesauri because you read along, you look at a word, you're like, what the heck does that word mean? Thesaurus to the rescue. Number 19, stickers. Stickers are just fun, generally, and there are all sorts of stickers out there for book lovers and for writers. These ones you can put on a book to show what type of book it is. Not just genres, but subgenres, and like enemies to lovers, different tropes. Those could be helpful if you want to subdivide your library into tropes or if you want to lend one to a friend and just tip them off as to what type of book it is. Number 20. Last but never least, what does a writer, a reader, a mom want more than anything? Time. Time alone. Give your writing or reading or just play mom. Give her some time on her own. I know the usual thing for Mother's Day is to take your mom out and be all around her, all up in her face, saying, Mom, what can I do for you? How can I show you my love? Where can we go? What can we do? Maybe your mom just wants some time alone. And that's not a bad thing, because think about it. The whole thing about being a mom tends to be the idea that your mom is there for you. Your mom is always around the family, doing things for the family. Even full-time working moms, when they get home, are usually expected to be there for the family. So maybe your mom just wants some time to herself for a change, and that's okay. You can spend some other time for the family. I know for my birthday, I typically go out and have writing time all day and dinner with my family. I divide it up, and it's perfect. So definitely give your mom some time alone and she will love you all the more for it. Even though that doesn't seem possible, it is a gift she will love. Happy Mother's Day to everyone. All mothers far and near, biological, adoptive, dads who stand in for moms, anyone who can stand in as a mom, even a very good friend. Whatever works for you, Whoever, it's all good. Happy Mother's Day to them and to you. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Bye!